<coughs> Sometimes the issue that people face with grace isn't so much about grace itself, but that they objectify or make an object out of grace rather than personify how they're getting grace or who is giving grace to them. What I mean by that is that sometimes we forget that getting grace is like asking for a favor. You're going before a judge and you're saying, okay, look, I understand, yes, I, I, I was speeding. I got a speeding ticket. Yes, I did it. I am guilty. There's, there's no doubt about that part. But even though I got that speeding ticket, you as a judge can decide what type of penalty I get. The law in the book says that I have to pay back a certain amount of money as a penalty for transgressing the speeding law. I have crossed over faster than what the law said I could do. And the reason that law was written for my benefit because I have now cause an offense to all these people that live in the same community that I live in. I've gone faster than what is safe. I've gone faster than what has been decided is reasonable in order for me to live my life. So yes, Judge, Your Honor, I understand that I have broken that law of society that has determined what is best for me. And I have agreed to that law that it is good. But now that I've broken it, the law says I must pay a certain amount of money. But you as a judge get to determine whether or not I must pay for that or be forgiven for that or to be given something else, something that only you could do, judge. Set aside the penalty of this. Even though I have committed that offense, even though I have transgressed that speeding law, you can set it aside if you choose to. You see, that's what grace is. Grace is the application of a judge telling you, yes, you're guilty. There's no doubt about it. The law is still in effect. The law is still going to affect you. You can't get out from under the fact that you've been found guilty. You know it. Society knows it. The judge knows it. The law knows it. It's been obvious since the moment you broke it because you got caught. And you see, the penalty part is where grace comes in. God has determined to set aside that penalty phase of your trial. He's decided to set it aside for the sake of not prosecuting it. Now, you could, if you were foolish enough, decide that you want to be prosecuted. You could decide that you want to go to court and have your day in court and try to present yourself as some type of good person or some type of righteous cause that you think, well, that law wasn't fair. It just didn't apply to me. You could try it, but you're trying to appeal to a judge who is sitting there for one reason and one reason only, and that's to apply the law to you according to what has been written. The law as we understand it, that God has set forth, has been recorded for you. It is contained in the book we call the Bible. It <coughs> is our manual for life. It is that which describes how we came into being, why we exist, and where we're going to exist when this life is over. It gives us all the things we need as instructions for life and how to live life, how we should act in society and how we should be as a people. You see, it's not about the Constitution of the United States of America or the penal code or the civil law or any of these laws that we have living in the land. Really, a Christian's determination of his conscience, of his soul, and of his physical well-being is determined by the Bible, the instructions that God has given us as he being our creator has set forth ways we should arrange our lives 
and we should put it in order according to his standards because society can change laws all the time and they do that regularly they change make it worse or easier better or for whatever reason decide to do something according to what they want as according as according as opposed to what is what's best for humanity being that God created humanity he knows what's best for all of us and so he set that forth in the scriptures when we read those scriptures and we discover and uncover what it is that God wants from us we realize we need some help <laughs> we really can't do it ourselves and so God sent his only begotten son to help us in that way that we would understand by direct communication without there being anyone to interpret for us we don't need a lawyer to represent us in court we don't need the law to condemn us but rather we have as it were a personal relationship with God determined by Jesus himself giving his life for us that if we open the door and we want to talk directly to this person who's going to judge us who's going to render a penalty phase for the verdict that's already been determined for us then we need to communicate to the court it's kind of like when you get a notice in the mail that says you need to appear in court now you may never have gotten a notice but it was sent you see the court doesn't care whether you got it physically or not they go by what their records say you were sent to notice you have been sent to notice by God you've been put on notice that you're going to hell period there's just no question about it every one of us can look around and see pretty much why we're going to hell because frankly when we do our own thing act our own way make our own laws try to determine our own way to go we tend to really screw up what God originally designed for us in the first place so we've already been given notice we've already been sent the fact of a court rendering verdict on us and unless we do something about it that determination when we die will be made on us and we will wind up in a lake of fire where hell will be cast into eternally punished for that with which we did not do about what the verdict had already been done to us so when we look at that we kind of realize oh my god you mean to tell me that without knowing it bluntly without really seeing it physically I am going to hell yeah that's what the courts have determined for you you have not been faithful in looking for and seeking out that notification that's been sent to you that declaration of your guilt before God and godliness so in a lot of ways people think and assume that they just have to be good and do good and act good so that they could just be good enough to get hopefully someplace they don't want to be but that's not what the notification said you see if you had read the fine print when you got your determination that you are guilty that the court has decided you have failed in what the law has required of you to do then in the fine print it would have said but if you choose to appeal this decision you can in one of two ways you can write your name and sign up for a court of appeals and decide to appeal and stand before God alone without there being any representation for you except for your own words and you can you can have your day in court so you can sign your name to that and go for it or you can put down the name of your advocate your lawyer your person who stands for you who stands better than a lawyer but will actually take upon himself your representation in this court and take care of the penalty phase of that which that notification says that you are going to get unless you do something about and all you need to do is write down Jesus you see 
if your lawyer stands up for you, if your advocate, if your person who is willing to take your place stands up for you and says, excuse me, your honor, I'm representing him, then the court treats your lawyer acting on your behalf as though it were you. And so he then becomes your advocate. He becomes your substitution. He becomes your propitiation for your actions because he's willing to not only represent you, he's willing to take in your place the cause that he's determined to give to you a due rendering of what the court has determined, which is, yes, you're guilty, but God had determined a better way to go. We call that grace. Because, you see, grace is that confusing a subject that unless you put it into legal terms, it gets confusing. But then when you put it in legal terms, some people still get confused. So then we put it into simpler terms, and sometimes it makes sense to people, sometimes it doesn't. Because grace is a word that's used as a gift, that's something that's given freely and didn't have to be done. But you're still dealing with a person. You're dealing with an individual. You're dealing with someone who technically has authority. So it's kind of like when you're a, a parent. You know, being a parent, you've seen your little one grow up, you know, and they got into the cookie jar. Now, you have spanked that child ten times over that cookie jar. You have told that child, don't get in the cookie jar. And sure enough, they got in the cookie jar. But then you're watching them this time, and for some reason, there's something different about the way they're getting into the cookie jar. They they seem to be, you know, like, really feeling bad about it. They kind of like, you know, are getting in it, but they just, you know, don't look like they're really into it. They look like they're really feeling bad. And so your little child comes up and, without eating the cookie, comes to you and says, Mommy, Daddy, I got in the cookie jar. And the father says, Well, you know, I told you if you get in that cookie jar, you're going to be spanked. And you've been spanked ten times before for getting in that cookie jar. But Mommy pops up and says, Honey, did you eat the cookie? And your little girl or boy says, No, I have it right here. And Mommy says, Okay, well, come here. And she picks you up and hugs you and takes the cookie away and puts it in the cookie jar and just says, that's okay. Just don't get in the cookie jar again. That's grace. You see, love, when it has an action and when it does something, is what grace is. It's a manifestation of the action of God in a way of determining your forgiveness and mercy in a kindly way that can be given to you in such a way that God's justice is perfect and His mercy endures forever. And the reality of the law still being in effect works. So there's always a way to look at and to understand grace if you're willing to study it, to apply it to your life. But then also something else is interesting. The reason why the mother is able to extend grace to that child. The reason why God is able to extend grace to you is because He wants you to learn how to give grace to others even as you've received grace for yourself. When God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all, Jesus received the judgment due for our sins. He received our deserved punishment, which the Bible declares is death. Read Romans 6.23. God has declared that if we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we will be forgiven of every wrong thing that we have ever done. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins, says 1 John 1.7. This cleansing is something the law could never do. It is what grace does. In examining, as we've been doing 
grace and reading and applying the word that you know we've been studying through the white uh, let's see what's the name of it white grace changes everything by Chuck Smith we've been defining it but now we're getting into the realm of what it does and why it works and how it applies because it isn't enough to just say you got grace and run off and do your own thing but it's an accomplishing purpose that's being designed in you to change your attitude to change your actions and to remove from you that tendency or that habit you have of continually breaking the law or transgressing as a lot of people say it's kinda like you know if you get enough speeding tickets you figure out you don't want to get any more speeding tickets because you're kind of tired of paying the price so you quit getting speeding tickets because one you don't want to lose your license you want to keep driving you want to have the privilege of being able to operate a vehicle on the roads with society around you and <coughs> you know it's a lot easier in life to have a car than it is to just go with either public transportation or go with walking on your feet which you could do you could have outside of the law some things working sort of and they work kind of for you but there is a better way or an easier way and sometimes for us that operate vehicles having a car allows us to do a lot of variety of things that we couldn't do any other way with God in your life that's what happens with grace if you are saved by grace and not some kind of legalistic form of religion then you have an opportunity to do things in a better way that's a lot easier to manifest in your life to share with others to care about people in a way that they will understand because you're a lot more tender-hearted than a legalistic religion you're a lot more caring than legalism you're a lot more forgiving than that kind of Christianity that always tries to make you do something rather than be something you see God in our relationships as we have them with each other and as we have them with him extends his love towards us through his son and because his son loves us he asks the father to send the very Holy Spirit that God had given to Jesus also so that we can have help and comfort in our time of need. Likewise, that's kind of like having a car in your life. You could walk if you want to. You can use public transportation if you choose to. But you know, having a car is kind of nice. It makes it a lot easier. Well, having the Holy Spirit in your life makes it a whole lot easier to understand grace, to give grace, to experience that kind of mercy and love that God wants you to give to others so that you would be merciful and people would look at you when they're in need and you would be able to help them because of the car you're driving so to speak because public transportation is kind of like going to church it's a good thing it's a wonderful thing but you know you're not in church seven days a week but your car is always parked out front isn't it right where you need it you kind of have to maintain a car and you really have to maintain your walk with the Lord you have to maintain your spiritual health so if you would be and understand this become born again you need to also seek out the Spirit of God so that you would have grace and be able to extend grace and mercy to others even as you've been given grace for without grace, you're really not saved. But by grace are you saved, even unto salvation. 